All right, in this lesson, we are gonna go over the acquisition method when we don't dissolve the investee. So we don't dissolve the investee. Uh, we will need to consolidate, but we are gonna consolidate every single year. So unlike the last lesson where we consolidated once, and we're done, in this case, we have to consolidate every single year, okay? So one of the things that I want you to think about is on the journal entry side, the beginning journal entry, technically speaking, the journal entry that goes to the investors is exactly like the equity method. And so under the equity method, we debit the investment in the investee account and we credit what we gave to them, cash, stock, whatever, okay? so. In the investor's books, we book it like an equity method. However, at the end of the year, we're going to reverse out that entry and we're gonna make some other consolidated entries. So again, this lesson is about when the acquirer acquires the investee, but we don't dissolve, everybody keeps their separate books, okay? So, uh, we still use kind of the fair value when we talk about Consolidation. So fair value is still like the consolidations. Um, the consolidation though is only simulated. The acquiring company does not physically record the acquired ac uh, asset. We use the equity method. So um, we don't acquire the assets because they've got separate books, we've got separate books, so we don't make their assets our assets. However, we do need to book into our books the cash we gave to them to acquire their assets or to acquire their investment. Um, this is good for that 50 plus 1% situation. So we still do the journal entry like we did in the equity method, debit investment and investees for 700,000. I've now changed this a bit. We're gonna credit cash for 200,000 and let's say we also issued stock for 500,000. So a common stock of 100,000 and then additional paid in capital of 400,000. Remember, depending on how, many how much stock we issued, we would take the stock that we issued, newly stock that we've issued, multiply it by the par value to get this amount. I didn't give you a par value, I didn't give you the amount of stock that we issued, um, but this will give you that showing of what happens. So remember in the last lesson we had all of these entries. We had you know debit to current assets, debit to equipment, debit to um, an increase in the computerized or the software, the invested software, uh, debit to customer contracts, credit to notes payable, credit to cash, credit to all of these. We still do that but we do that at the end of the year when we do the consolidation. So because it's only simulated, we'll do that at the end of the year, but we will not do them on the books of the investor. The investor simply does this like they've done it on the equity method, okay? So each corporation still independent records are kept. So they still keep their independent records. So under uh, the, uh, the acquisition method in which we're acquiring control over the investee, but we're gonna keep separate books. Each corporation keeps their record separately. The only entry that happens on the books is this entry right here, okay? Which is just like the equity method of accounting that we talked about um, in the previous lessons, okay? So we use something called a consolidated entry and worksheet to consolidate. So during the year, each corporation does their own thing. At the end of the year, we open up this file and this file will have a worksheet and we'll, on that worksheet, book consolidated entries. Okay, for this purposes of this lesson, we're not gonna talk about, we're not gonna do the worksheet, um, but basically a worksheet would have, you know, let's say uh, a great way with do, doing this is an Excel document. You throw in on this Excel a template of every single balance that the investor has and then all the balance of the investees and then in this worksheet you make adjustments based on some of these things here, some of the acquisitions that happen and then some of the intercompany transactions that occurred. Okay, so we make the adjustments and eliminations and those adjustments and eliminations are entered into the consolidation worksheet only. They are not entered into the books and records of both separate companies. Okay, so consolidated entries do not 
hit these books. Instead, they hit this worksheet. The worksheet has nothing to do with the accounting programs or the accounting systems that are already in place. It's kind of a separate thing. Okay, so neither organization's books and consolidated entries, each one keeps them separately. So again, kind of to walk through what we just talked about in this short video again. When we don't consolidate their books into our books on day one, each organization keeps separate books. At the end of the year, we're gonna need to do something called a consolidation, and we will do this every single year as long as we have separate books. The way that we do that is we use something called a consolidation elimination worksheet. And in that worksheet, we're going to put all of the trial balance of one company in there and then of the other company. And then within that, we're going to make some adjusting or an eliminating entries to come up with our final uh, financial statement. Uh, typically, this is done on Excel, so you might have sheet one, put in all your trial balance for company A. Sheet two, put all your trial balances for company B. Sheet three, uh, combine those balances or put those balances in a, in a unique form. Um, and then sheet four or five would be put all the consolidated entries. Sheet six, take sheet C uh, three and take all the entries and meld them into the financial statement or an adjusted financial statement. So that's what we're talking about here. Remember, when we don't consolidate on day one, we will do this every single year. Okay, so every single year, we're gonna reconsolidate everything and make sure that we've eliminated or adjusted all the entries that we should have done if it was a straight consolidation into my books on